Um, you know her as one uh, heck of a Canadian singer, songwriter, and performer uh, with all the glitz and glamour that goes along with it. You've seen her in videos, you've seen her in photographs, you've seen her in magazines, uh, who also uh, lets her hair down, uh, gets down in the trenches, and does stuff for problems in the world, which would be, and we're going to talk about it right now, um, HIV and AIDS on the planet. Keisha Shante is with us this morning. Good morning to you. Good morning. Um, now, you were just in Kenya. I, I want to know, this is, must be very surreal for you. You just got back how long? A week ago? A week ago, yeah. Okay. And um, uh, what did you see? Just bring that story back to us now. Uh, it was surreal. Uh, we went to an orphanage and there were a bunch of little kids who lost their parents to HIV and AIDS. Mm -hmm. um, and some of them actually had HIV and they didn't know it. They were six years old, eight years old. Man. Uh, one of them lost their hearing and they weren't told because there's such a stigma uh, in Kenya about the HIV virus. They think it's, it's something that, uh, that you would have caught from a prostitute and that is not the case there. Sure. Um, so there's this weird stigma and um, a lot of kids are uncomfortable but really we were driving through different villages and uh, there was a bunch of kids coming up to our car and they love the camera and um, one of them kept saying bread bread do you have bread so uh, we gave them a granola bar and that's all we had on us and mm -hmm. and um, just to see the struggle was great it was quite profound. It really changed my life, and I honestly wish everybody could get an opportunity to do what I did. It seems like we have been dealing with uh, the, you know, AIDS and HIV uh, forever. Uh, yeah. we, we haven't. This has been a discovery, really, the, the, the anniversary of it is 30 years yeah. on, on June 5th. Yeah. Um, as we continue this struggle, I guess there's, there's more people who should actually, if they could, have a more hands-on approach to this, as, as you've discovered. Being hands-on has kind of changed your, your perspective on things, hasn't it? Yeah, I mean, you know, we hear about these issues and we, and we see commercials and we see pictures of kids and, uh, you know, we see those things and it, it, for whatever reason, it doesn't hit our core mm -hmm. the way that it should. And of, of course, me being there and seeing these orphans having such a tough time, little things like just food, just mm -hmm. water, just a place to sleep, just education. The things that are so simple in Canada that we get all the time, no problem. Um, to actually see it still going on in 2011 and actually be personally attached to each individual kid, mm -hmm. it's different when you're sitting face to face with that person and you're like, wow, you're just like me. And, and I was born in Canada, you were born here, and for some reason we don't have equal opportunity. It makes me feel like, you know what, I'm privileged and I'm blessed and it's, I need to use that opportunity to give back in some way. And I think everybody in Canada is blessed enough to do that. Mm -hmm. the, the medical facilities, which I want to ask you about, yes. because we, we get to see, uh, again, it, sometimes it's front page news, sometimes it ends up being on page six, but you're just getting back. The, the medical facilities are certainly... Um, oh, overcrowded, yeah. uh, long lineups, expensive. Um, I got to say, the, the government in Africa, are, they're doing a pretty good job right now um, in terms of spreading awareness about the HIV and AIDS virus, in terms of it's all over TV, it's all over the radio, but the reality of it is uh, there's a lot of rural areas um, and there's millions of people in rural areas that don't have radio or TV, mm -hmm. so there is a mobile clinic uh, that I got to experience with CANFAR and pretty much it's a truck with uh, medical supplies that just drive around and try to just help and people. And try to find people And it's just, help. it's really awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, now, not that uh, what you were doing was of, not of the utmost importance. It was when you were there. Did you have any time to actually um, uh, take advantage of the, the, the beauty that, that is Africa? You know what? Africa is just beautiful in general. Um, even with all the pain uh, going on, just a drive from one village to another. Uh, you're on a dirt road, but there's a lion. There's wild boars. Uh, where we stayed, we stayed on a camp, and uh, it definitely wasn't glamorous. We were in a tent uh, in the middle of the jungle, and there was no running water, there was, you know, no electricity, um, and, and I was with a, a lot of, uh, of volunteers, uh, student leaders for CANFAR, who were also there with me, who mm -hmm. were from university, so we're all about the same age on this experience, and yeah, there's definitely, like, rhinos just walking right Hi, past rhino. you. Just, How you doing, oh, Rhino? Hello, Lion. It's surreal. You yeah. think you're watching, like, Discovery Channel or something. So, uh, as you're talking about it and you're saying right now, it, it's, it's changed your perspective on things because it was a first-hand experience yeah. for you. Uh, and, of course, there were other youth ambassadors that, that were there with you. Um, somebody who's watching right now who might want to be involved with it, I mean, they might not have the opportunity to, to, to go to Kenya, to go to Africa, to experience firsthand. Uh, do you have any suggestions that they might... Um, 
when you yeah. might take them to, to get involved? Well, one thing we're doing is we're putting together a video of the trip, and, mm -hmm. I, and I'm hoping that it will really resonate with people. Um, but you can go to canfar.com. Uh, they put up a lot of different tours, um, and they go to different countries, and you can volunteer and sign up to go. A lot of those students, they signed up and, the and found their way to come with us. Yeah. So anybody can do that if they just go on the website. Right. Yeah. And, uh, and I'm going to let the cat out of the bag, which would be, again, very surreal. You went from that to come back here yeah. to go to go off to Cancun, Cancun yeah. to shoot a video yeah. and then come back here and talk about it. I yeah. mean, that's a lot to take in. You're doing okay with it. <laughs> yeah, it, it is. It, it's pretty, I don't know, I, you kind of have to numb yourself to it and, and uh, it's, it's really, it's just, yeah, it really affects you yeah. quite a bit. Yeah. Well, thanks for doing what you do. And uh, I'm, I'm hopefully what you, you know, the conversation we had right now has inspired a lot of people to do that. I well, hope so. as, the, as the old commercial goes, one be gets the next, one yeah. be gets the next. They told two friends. Yeah, I hope so. so. That so would be, so it'd be a dream yeah. because, I mean, we're at the 30 year anniversary on Sunday uh, for the first diagnosis of HIV and AIDS. And I'm hoping we don't have to do this another 30 years. It yeah. just doesn't make sense. That's so. right. Yeah. Keisha Shanti, thank you so much for being here this thank morning. Thank you. Thank you for having me. All right.